on Mars, there was virtually no unemployment. The entire population engaged either directly or indirectly in the greatest engineering feat in human history, the terraforming of a planet. James S. A. Corey, Caliban's War. Mars, the red planet and fourth from the sun, has long been a source of fascination for humanity from the ancient Egyptian astronomers to the first telescopic observations of Mars by Galileo to the Mariner 9 space probe. Humanity had dreamed of stepping foot on Mars and then putting a colony there. That dream would eventually come to pass when during the 21st century after several exploratory missions, a permanent colony would finally be set up. The early Martian colonists were scientists, explorers, and of all mixed types. They had brought with them to this new world the old religions of Earth, such as Jainism, Christianity, Mormonism, and Islam. This diverse group held out together, surviving the harsh conditions of Mars. But not only that, they were united by a dream of one day making Mars Earth-like to terraform that would take hundreds of years. Most Martians would be employed towards this goal, or part of the military devoted to the Great Project. As the colony grew, it soon developed ahead of Earth in technology. They built better ships and developed environmental sciences that was decades ahead of Earth. Martians often viewed Earth people as lazy and unmotivated just sitting back and collecting government handouts, called BASIC. They were, however, still a colony of Earth, and still under UN rule, but that would change. Mars as an independent world was becoming a real possibility, with secessionists handing out manifestos as the free voice of the people. The UN mostly ignored this. However, what they would not ignore, and what would almost plunge the two worlds into war, was when Mars attempted to construct 18 cargo ships to lessen their dependence on Earth vessels that supplied the Red Planet. In response to this, 40 UN warships were sent to Mars as they invoked the Breakaway Province rule in their charter. It seemed humanity was in for its first interplanetary war, but cooler heads would prevail. War would be avoided as the diplomats worked out the problem. However, tensions would be left high between the two worlds. As time went on, elements critical to both worlds like lithium, molybdenum, and tungsten became more scarce each year. Then the United Nations made the decision that all future spaceships would be built in Earth's bush shipyards, and that the shipyards of Mars were to be closed. Again, tensions mounted, and it seemed that interplanetary war was about to happen. However, before war could erupt, a historical event took place that would change the course of humanity forever. Martian scientist Solomon Epstein had been working for years to improve the efficiency of spaceship engine design. The current engine designs of the day used propellant that was limited and could not be run long enough to achieve the high velocities needed for humanity to effectively spread out into the rest of the solar system. Epstein had designed an engine that would use a magnetic coil exhaust acceleration to increase the drive's efficiency. This would give spacecraft the ability to sustain constant thrust throughout its voyage. This way, vessels could achieve speeds that was previously impossible. At the halfway point of the ship's journey, it could then be flipped around and the drive used to deaccelerate the ship. As war between Earth and Mars loomed, Epstein would test drive his prototype engine using his three-man yacht, taking his vessel into Mars orbit for a rushed test of the new drive. Epstein started the burn sequence. The vessel raced off into the void of space, and the new engine had performed far beyond the expectations of Solomon Epstein. The yacht shot through space at speeds never before reached by humanity. The vessel had reached a fraction of the speed of light. However, the ship's incredible speeds had placed so much force on Epstein, he could not lift his hand to deactivate the drive. As the yacht rocketed off out into the solar system, Solomon Epstein's greatest creation would turn out to also be his coffin. 
Although the ship had shot out of the solar system, Epstein had left the design plans for his new engine on his home computer. Mars, now having this incredible new technology in its hands, had the ultimate bargaining chip with the UN. The war between Earth and Mars was once again avoided when the designs for the Epstein drive were shared with the UN. In exchange for this, the UN would give Mars its independence, and the Martian Congressional Republic was formed. Over time, the humans who lived on Mars would be changed by the lighter gravity of the planet. Martians would be taller, with less muscle mass and bone density compared to their counterparts on Earth. To compensate for this, blood oxygen boosters, muscle fatigue inhibitors, and bone density enhancers were available. If used, these treatments could allow a Martian to easier withstand the gravity of Earth. Martians have also evolved to use slightly less oxygen on average compared to other humans in the solar system, with the average Martian lifespan being 120 years. Martians who have spent entire lives in the underground cities of Mars often suffer from agoraphobia when exposed to the overcrowded cities and wide open skies of Earth. Martian life is a world of domes and vacuum-sealed high-speed railways, underground apartments referred to as holes, and huge hydroponic farms, with the large population centers requiring a standardized language of military and government. The settlements of Mars is made up of first Olympus Mons, the largest mountain in the solar system, a natural monument that symbolized the Martian ambition. It is made up of several small cities and prisons filled with rock-breaking chain gangs. These are cut deep into the slopes of Olympus Mons. It is also the location of Hecate Base, the main training facility for the Martian Navy. The Mariner Valley, which is set in the Great Canyon known as Valles Marineris, and stretches for 4,000 kilometers. The Mariner Valley was settled by Chinese, East Indian, and Texan immigrants in the earliest days of Mars colonization. It is now one of the most well-developed areas of Mars, with five neighborhoods spread across the sides of the canyon, linked together by a network of bridges and tubes with a high-speed rail. Located in the northern reach of Aurorae Sinus is Londres Nova. Like other Martian cities, it is mostly underground and has a network of tunnels under permafrost with tube stations marking the different neighborhoods of the long since built up residential areas. It is made up of seven neighborhoods and 10 agricultural domes with parts showing signs of early colonization from back when automated construction robots tunneled into the planet's surface. Adderpole is the downtown area with tube connections to all the other neighborhoods and is the location of the offices for the Martian Congressional Republic. It is host to a variety of shops and restaurants catering to the high-class residents. Salton is located under one of the largest of the agricultural domes and is connected to Donbad Nova Research Center Observatory by a surface monorail. It is also the location of the Upper University, Central Educational Authority and Technical Clinics. Breach Candy, a middle-class neighborhood, is the location of the Lower University along with Laventine Park. Nariman and Martinez Town were the manufacturing and energy production sites during the early days of the colony, but has since become obsolete due to technological development. These two neighborhoods have been home to mostly lower class families and have been struggling to reinvent themselves. Finally, there is Innes Deep and Innes Shallows. They are considered to be the worst parts of town, with each having one tube connecting them to the rest of the city, making them both cul-de-sacs. It is a haven for belter-like Martians and outsiders. The people who live here are usually described as independent, antisocial, and intolerant, with drug dealers who recruit young chemists from the university to make high-quality narcotics to sell to the Martian population. It is also home to Martians involved in social outreach programs to help the dispossessed. The largest Martian research center is located at Danbad Nova, it is host to a wide variety of government-funded initiatives and regional research wings. Here is where anti-cancer treatments and water reclamation techniques and the beginnings of the Epstein Drive were developed. It is also host to a complement of hotels filled with all the luxuries for visitors to the research center, with some of its visitors from powerful conglomerates such as the Kwiatkowski Mutual Interest Group and Maztec, as they have large stakes in the labs of Danbad Nova. 
With Mars having been ahead of Earth on a technological level, the Martian Congressional Republic is a force to be reckoned with, with its exploratory and military ships being some of the most advanced ships in the solar system, with the only exceptions being the exotic UN flagships that were financed by the ultra-wealthy of Earth. Although it is smaller in size, the more advanced fleet of the MCRN can defeat any UN or Belter equivalent with the pride of the Martian fleet being the Doniger class Dreadnought, its class named after the former flagship of the Navy and measuring in at nearly 500 meters in length. It is armed to the teeth with point defense cannons, torpedo tubes, and massive rail guns. The Doniger class Dreadnoughts serve as flagships for the MCRN fleets and are large enough to carry smaller escort frigates within them. In addition to the Doniger class, the Martian Navy also boasts a wide variety of vessels, such as fast attack cruisers, destroyers, and frigates. Mars Navy also has advanced stealth technology for its smaller ships. Up until the Eros incident, Martian and Earth ships were part of a coalition fleet that policed the solar system. Along with its impressive space fleet, one of the most feared sites to step on the battlefield is the Martian Marines decked out in Goliath military battle armor at two and a half meters tall and weighing 400 kilograms. Before the marine climbs in, the armor is constructed from a titanium and ceramic composite and allows the wearer to survive the vacuum of space or radiation from a recent nuclear blast. With a hydraulic system to enhance the marine's strength and is armed with a rotary machine gun, grenade launcher, and micro-missile pack, along with a sophisticated sensor package that feeds data to the helmet's heads-up display. Mars, the red planet aptly named after the Roman god of war, as it is a world of warriors, hardened by the harsh planetary conditions with a proud military, and united by a dream of one day turning the red planet green.